All right, we are back with our real thoughts. Uh, it's a new day in America. New day. Or <laughs> night or apocalypse. <laughs> or upside down. I think we're in the upside down. We are in the upside down. I think that's a... I, I think, without even realizing it, I think we're wearing appropriate shirts. <laughs> oh, no, this was intentional. I, oh, that was intentional. I, okay. felt, uh, <laughs> I felt Koopa was the best way to go. So, so um, yeah, uh, just... Business as usual for us. Uh, I want to create a safe space. We're, like, well, we'll still make political jokes here and there, but uh, I, I just want a place for you to go and be happy. Um. We are we are still on the air. Yes. For now. For now. <laughs> uh, so we're not in V for Vendetta territory yet, where the Gestapo like punches us in the face and says, "Who's laughing now, funny man?" So I. But okay, what are we... Uh, enough of this darkness. What are we doing? Actually, you know, the more I think about it, I want to say I, I got this from a... Uh, someone at a convention recommended this. And uh, I was like, oh, that'd be good. I can't believe I haven't talked about it. And then after everything has happened, I'm like, actually, this is kind of a perfect movie to talk about, an interesting one. Uh, let's talk about Patch Adams. Ugh. <laughs> <laughs> and I'm really interested. Hey. Oh, I hate this movie too. Uh, it is Greg Sestero's best role. Um, <laughs> but I always, I always forget. I always forget too. He apparently had a much bigger the scene room, too. The, the the room just is so in everybody's public consciousness, or like that. You know, that mind when you think of Greg Sister, but I always forget about Patch Adams. Yeah, he has this little far as no lines or anything, but he originally had lines. Uh, but no, I think this is an interesting movie to talk about because uh, the ideas behind the real person are quite fascinating. Uh, the and movie, it's... It, this was a common problem with, God rest his soul, Robin Williams' films. Mm. Um... I love Robin Williams, like, he's a great comedian, like, it's not a judgment on him, but the movies he chose always had a great message, and I love that, I appreciate that, I have no problem with the message, but the way they're done, it's so hokey schmaltzy. and schmaltzy. The music and, plays, they're very yeah. formulaic. And, um, yeah, I kind of feel if you really want these kind of messages There's a to reason work. Goodwill Hunting is one of his best films, because it's the same kind of, like, message of overcoming difficulties, but it it lacks that kind of, like, it doesn't feel as manufactured, like a home, like, I, I feel like Robin Williams movies are almost like Hallmark card films, yeah. or Hallmark movies, like... Well, when he was in the good mood, with, then he'd go through sort of the bad mood, where yeah. he'd do, like, you know, one-hour photo, insomnia, debt to smoochie, and stuff, well, and then he'll counting, get back to that's a completely different, I'm not counting those in this list. But he kind of did list. that back and forth, they were mostly well, the inspirational well, stuff, the post, and then he would kind of go into the, whoa, But that was okay, the post-Goodwill so. hunting phase, mm -hmm. like, I feel like somehow... With that film, he got into this kind of like, oh, I can stretch myself and, and do these things. I, I thought it was very interesting. I'm mm. not saying all of those darker films he did are great, <laughs> but I certainly think they're interesting. I would watch them way more than I ever would Patch Adams or Bicentennial <laughs> yes, I, I Man. I will say that. Or, you know. I, I don't like Death to Smoochie, but I would gladly watch that over Bicentennial yeah, there, there Man. Was a, there was a phase Patch where every, every Robin Williams film you saw... With the exception of Hook, which was nice because, you know, even though it's not a perfect film, it's its own thing. Mm -hmm. But almost every Robin Williams film you saw was either Good Morning Vietnam or Dead Poets Society, Society or yeah. both. Yeah. <laughs> um, and this definitely falls into that category. And, uh, but what's so interesting about it is that uh, doing this movie... Uh, forced me to do research on the real guy. Uh, looks nothing like Robin Williams, is quite a giant. Uh, I mean, this guy, he looks like... If Ed Wynn was still alive, <laughs> like through this Mark Twain mustache or yeah. something, like just this big goofy guy, but he is, uh... He looks like some sort of performer at a theme park. Yeah, but... Like doing a magic show well, or something. Well, that's kind of what he does, but yeah. his uh, idea was that hospitals should be very positive places. Uh, and that the more positive energy there is around you, uh, the better you'll feel and the faster you'll recover and can even help save lives. Uh, and I'm not against that. Honestly, when you hear him really sit down and talk about it, it's like, this is fascinating. And he himself is not a fan of the movie. You know, he tried to promote it when it came out. Like, Nor eh, should he what be. happens, But uh, he didn't like the film. And uh, he said a big part of that is that, you know, they focus on one thing. They, they focus on the clown element. He's like, 
That's not all there is. There's a yeah. lot more to it. There's a lot more to oh. the comforting. There's a lot more to the medicine. There's a lot more to all this. And of course, the things that we point out in the review, like there was no love interest and it was a guy that died, you know, and it was a best friend. Yeah, and, which is made... just so awful. Which apparently there's in interviews opinion. where he said his friend would have just laughed at that. Yeah. Like, yep, you're a woman now. <laughs> uh, 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 and now a woman of love interest and stuff. Like, apparently this guy had a really good sense of humor, so it makes me feel a little better. But it's still like, what yeah. the hell, movie? That's awful. Um, and you know what? In a, in a dumb way, I almost forgive those gross historical inaccuracies because I don't think it affects the message as much. What does bother the fuck out of me is that scene where it's just like, ha ha, I'm gonna steal all the materials from the hospital. I'm like, yeah. I who went, does you? that? Uh, that was just like, and I just, I remember staring at that going, I'm like, I will bet you a million dollars, Patch, the real Patch Adams never did that. He's doing it in so, a goofy way. Yeah, he's got that the is person so on the stretcher covered up and holding all the stuff. He's got like the mask. A doctor and, would do, yeah, and I, and the movie plays this as a comedic moment, and I'm like, no, that's something a psychopath does. <laughs> that's robbing Peter to pay Paul. Like, I'm just gonna take out of this hospital as, as if, like, you know, it's just magically replaced instantly. Like, nobody's gonna be like, what the happen to our Because as we all know, like, hospitals are so well-funded. They have so yeah, much material, right? so many doctors. I mean, come on. And, yeah, that, and it pisses me off because he's a doctor in the movie! <laughs> no, that blew my mind. I have a, I have a hard time, you know. So that, that, one, that one scene pissed me off the most. And then... You know, the, the friend thing changing it to a woman in love interest is dumb. It's, it's screenwriting cliches 101. If, if you yeah. ever want to teach a class in how not to write a screenplay. Patch Adams is a great example. Yeah, it's a pretty good one. You know, the other cliche that drove me nuts, because I'm like, yeah, I'm sure Patch Adams sat on a cliff, and a butterfly floated up to him, and he reached up into the sky, and was like, yes, and the music swelled, and I'm just like, fuck this. You know, I just realized something. Um, ah, you, you wouldn't be able to do this, because I think... A, too many people like the movie, and B, too many people would connect it to Robin Williams uh, with his passing and everything. But wouldn't this be a fascinating remake? What if they remade this more like what the real person was like? Oh, I'd, I'd kill it. I'd kill to see that. Because <laughs> You'd kill it? What a weird thing to say. I'd kill it. <laughs> I'd kill this movie. I'd kill to see that because if you did a, like, I'm going to say Oscar bait style where we're going to go for kind of a quasi-historical movie that examines the real person and, and what happened, like um, Imitation Game or something, which has its own cliches and stuff, but, but more serious along those lines, like, yeah, these are the real issues behind, like, here's pros and cons, and this is what he did, and, you know, these are some of the benefits, and maybe this is what he was up against. But, you know what, the, that's part of my problem is... I understand because there was pushback at the time, even when the film was released from some doctors who were just like, you know, we shouldn't, we shouldn't have to be clowns and, and, and this and that, you know, but I, I don't think that was his point. It's that hospitals need to be a little more inviting. And the funny thing is, since then, I've seen that. Like, I've seen hospitals that have the money. You know, that's a big issue, particularly in this country. But hospitals that, you know, have the money to do that, rich hospitals, have tried to go for more of a foresty feel and open and not the same just plain Sterile, white colors. Yeah. Uh, yeah. And, uh, you know, the, the kids' wards have, like, you know, painted murals. Like, so I feel, though, that the villain, <laughs> yeah, like, is so cartoonish. Hoonishly over the top. Okay. That How dare you get us down to that level? Those measly you patients. You wanna make us like that? We're gonna make doctors out of you. I. And they're like all standing in the wall. You know, it's uh, you know what it is. It's uh, he's more like a character out of Jaws. Like <laughs> you're gonna be soulless, like dolls. Eyes. <laughs> like he was so cartoonishly evil that it sucked any reality out of it for me. I'm just like I'm like okay, like, this is a little much. And I start to then question the other side, which I kind of agree with, which is like, we need to treat the body as a whole, mind, body, and spirit. And it can't just be about only the body. Because they've proven this. Like, if you're unhappy, clinically depressed, all these other things, and miserable, you're not going to heal as fast. Mm. 
So, but th that's a great argument, and it's all sucked out of it. I can't take it seriously because it's just yeah. showing this in such a cartoony way that I'm like, well, now you're making me question what you're calling the positive side of this because I just can't believe how ridiculous this is. Like, and it's like these Christian exploitation films, like where the atheist is so ridiculously evil or you know, smug I, I or something. I was just like, thinking of that too. I was kind of thinking of those Christian. Uh, you it's like know, a movie Brad Jones films. would review. This is this is the doctor equivalent. <laughs> yeah, to uh, and he's <laughs> the, that doctor is the Kevin Sorbo. Yeah, God's not dead. <laughs> he's the atheist. <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, I was just thinking of that because you know a lot of these Christian movies. I mean, you know, we were raised you know Roman Catholic and stuff. You know, we're not anti-religion or anything. So that we know a lot of these films have you know they're coming from a place that kind of wants to do good but then it's sort of being manipulated in a way and, and sort of blackened and poisoned and it's turning into something that's actually going to do more harm and it's one of those things where it's like I think when you do have that cartoon I, that's one of the reasons why it's so hard now <laughs> you know I, I think to kind of talk about this movie because this uh, movie does want to play paint the very black and white you know good guy bad guy thing in a time where a lot of people want to do that really hardcore right now and that's kind of what got us here to begin well, with but then or do you just become passive or whatever and it's one of those things where it's like it doesn't it's it's with this film you do not need to do that and i think it hurts it when you do that because there's some interesting ideas that come from a place that seems very simple but it can get lost so easily you need an interesting complicated way to show it a just, deep way to show it it's just so dumb it's a fucking hospital there's no good guys and bad yeah. guys it's just guys <laughs> you know and i know doctors can be smug and have terrible bedside manners but you know at the end of the day they still have an interest in curing you like it's just it just went so over the top with it that i'm just like why is this cowboys and indians all of a sudden well and i oh, cowboys and native americans tumbling <laughs> <I'm sorry. laughs> um but i think there's something to uh yeah, I, I sort of look at this and I see them going, you know, back and forth between like, you know, we need to do something to help the kid. We need to do something to, you know, to these poor patients and stuff. And, and the, uh, well, the bedside manner, like you said, which I found out, uh, that actually is one of the few things that got right. They actually did not have very good bedside manner back then. Uh, from oh, what God, I'm no. hearing. Uh, that I didn't know, but that... There's some that's... doctors that still don't. They just come in and it's like... Yeah, do this, we'll do that, and then get the fuck out. <laughs> but, but that's something, again, that's the fault of this movie, is that because it's so cartoonish that when you get to something that is correct, you have a hard time believing it. Uh, it doesn't create yeah. a world where it feels believable. And I think that really hurts what could be a great message and some really great ideas. Uh, you can look the dude up. Uh, you know, he's actually trying to put together... I think he called it a ha hospital, I think, where he wants it to be sort of like this very positive, upbeat place, and he wants to see if that'll help people get better faster. Um, so, and I think, I think it could. I don't think, like he says, being a clown isn't everything. You gotta know your medicine. You have to treat every patient, you know, a little differently, and you have to be good at that, and you have to be trained in that. Well, that's another but, problem with the movie. I never got the sense that he was... Even a doctor? <laughs> yeah, I'm trying to think. Does I just, he all I do? saw was... He's annoying the other doctors yeah, all anything. I saw was Robin Williams. And I'm not throwing all of that on Robin Williams, because if the script doesn't give him any scenes where he's really doctoring, what are you supposed to do? Like, But yeah, I just came out of it. I was like, well, he just seemed more like a clown than a doctor to me. And I, I, I would imagine that to get through medical school, you have to know something. You so, know, And one of the few performances in this film where I was really like... Man, is this guy just doing his all with a part that's really nothing. Uh, Philip Seymour Hoffman in this. Another God rest is... Uh, man, there's so many dead people in this the more I think about it. Um, but, this, this year uh, alone. Yeah. Fuck 2016. Fuck 2016, yeah. Um, but, uh, you know, with, the, uh, with him in this, you know, he has a scene where he's like, I, I said that you were cheating because how can you possibly do this? How can you... I, I study three times as much as you do, and you barely open a book and stuff. How can you possibly pass this? How can you possibly do this well? And it's never explained. It's no. Just, <laughs> you know, where it's like, well, that, that was a concern, because he actually is a people. brilliant mind. Yeah. There are people for whom some things come easier, but the way the film portrayed it, I'm like, no, Philip Seymour Hoffman's right. We never do see him ever. 
Like, so... It, that That's what Bill Seymour Hoffman sees, and then what the movie sees. The yeah. movie's gotta see how he does this, you know? And you know, like... It, maybe he does pick up things very fast. Could be, yeah. but they never explain that. It's never looked into. It just... Yeah, he just was such a prick in this movie. <laughs> I just I just wanted to slap him across the face, and I'm like, that should not been... And I like Robin Williams, too. I don't want to slap Robin Williams across the face, but this movie just did nobody any favors. Well, and that's kind of like uh, we talked about with the, like those old environmental films like Fern Gully and stuff like God. that, where it's Toxic like they're, love. They're, they're doing such a terrible job with what's supposed to be a good message that, that you, just you wanna, want to retaliate yeah. against that message. You just, you just want to club a baby seal. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I, I have never wanted to destroy so much Arctic wildlife than after an episode of Captain Planet. <laughs> and I, I have no idea. I don't know. I mean, you say Patch Adams, people know what it is. I mean, they know that it's based on true stories, a Robin Williams film. So, I mean, hopefully it did some yeah. good, but I feel like this could have been, I... like, explosive <sighs> if well, it was we got, done really we well. We got pushback. I remember in the comment sections, some people were just like, I don't get it. Why? It's, it's a good message. And I'm like, separate that from execution. Because I'm not arguing that Patch Adams, you know, or some of the messages behind it are bad. I'm arguing that the execution sucked. Mm. They're two different things. We're not saying, oh, well, that's bad, what he wanted to do. Like, well, some things in that movie were bad because they yeah. didn't even really happen. But, you know, so... I, uh. Well, and I'm remembering, like, we were talking about the cartoonish bad guy, and he has a line. I, I really remember. Uh, he says, you know, you're a man of a brilliant mind, and like most brilliant men, you feel the rules don't apply to you. And I thought, that's actually kind of a fascinating line, because there yeah. are a lot of, like, and that can be kind of a good thing or a bad thing. We don't, but it was this awareness that he, this is a person who's brilliant, but you need to kind of play by our rules, take a step back and stuff. And I thought, maybe this will be an interesting person, but no, they just turn him into a cartoon character. And yeah. that's such a shame, because it would have been interesting to see these two minds that think very differently, but are very capable and are both very brilliant, kind of butting heads and trying to figure this out. That would have been really fascinating. Nope! They uh -huh. don't do that. <laughs> Hong Kong! <laughs> oh, Patch! Yeah, he's just the angry dean Hogan. from like every, every college movie. <laughs> <laughs> so it, it's one You're of those... a loser, McFly. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's like just all those clips. Actually, I thought that principle was more realistic than the, <laughs> yeah, than the that guy. I've known principles like that. <laughs> um, so, yeah, and then the, the fucking ending with the... Could, of course you need a courtroom scene. Courtroom. That's, room. Could, that's the other screenwriting the cliches noses. 101. Make sure it ends somehow in a courtroom. Make sure there's an applause. Making the inspirational speech. Uh, the yeah. sappy music plays. <laughs> yeah. No, and then, right. uh, you know, I, my favorite, if, if you want a good time, go type in Roger Ebert review oh, yeah, Patch yeah, yeah. Adams. It's one of Ebert's best. And the way he ends it... It just, just plays up the ridiculousness of it and how sappy it is and how cliche it is. Like, and wouldn't you know it, dear reader, the children march in with the little clown noses and the applause. Like, the, the sarcasm dripping from it yeah. is a work of art. <laughs> but, but actually, both, uh, I forget that's when Siskel is going through, like, you know, uh, uh, the illness and stuff, but I remember he really hated it too. And it, his written review was very funny. And I, Cisco well, was in I, and out of hospitals at yeah. that point. So, well, and I th I want to say the uh, the the TV show review was pretty funny too, but I can't remember. But I remember they were both kind of having fun mocking this film. They were just kind of like, "Oh, good, like you're getting this too." I want to be sure it's not just me. No, not as fun as Godzilla, where they were complaining that they didn't get eaten by the monster. Yeah, <laughs> so go have us in there. Come on, have us get squashed. Which, What's by wrong the way, is one of the greatest ways to retaliate. Brilliant. Like I, do it. Yeah. I, I, I love it when people troll and I'm just like, no, let me show you how it's done. This is what you could have gone yeah, with. Come if, you're on, gonna, if you're gonna insult me, let's go, let's go to work. Okay, I'll help you out here. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Teach the troll how to troll you. Um, so, uh, yeah, I'm trying to, I, I would say definitely go check out The Real Person because I'm not gonna say you're gonna agree with everything. Uh, you know, I'm not always sure I agree with everything either, but it's Worth looking into. It's definitely something we... For I one think, thing, I don't think anything on the planet should be called a ha hospital. <laughs> I unless kind you're, of agree. Unless you're, unless you're making a horror movie set in a carnival or something. <laughs> 
send you to the ha hospital. <laughs> it's just hard Carnival to say. Carnival would have a location like that. And I'm sure that's like part of it. You're not supposed to take it too seriously or whatever. But I'm like, I'm kind of with you. I just feel yeah. like there's a better. So I don't have to agree with anything. But that's the thing. It's there. complicated <laughs> issues, none of which are explored in this movie. Yes. <laughs> um. So uh. Okay. Before I go, I actually forgot about that. I forgot to show you this too, Rob. All right. So. When we I think did, he's taking his pants off, folks. <laughs> when we did our real thoughts of Devil, uh, somehow we got talking about... I don't even know how we got onto it, but we got talking about uh, combining Pokemon with Schindler's List and call it Pika's List, and we yeah. just kept going and going. Well, at the last convention I was at, somebody actually put together a poster for Pika's yes! List. Yes! There it is. Yes! Oh, yeah. And uh, I just thought... This is happening. <laughs> Spielberg, eat your heart out. <laughs> and my favorite, the little tagline there, gotta save them all. <laughs> <laughs> so, um, Yes. Yeah, I just had it. And, and he did... Ooh, and it's an Academy Award winner for Best Original Score Pokemon theme. <laughs> yep, that's on there, too. Wait, did he... Hold on, let me see. Oh, no, I, I don't think he went in. Oh, uh, uh, no, wait. Uh, oh, wait, did he? No, they're they're actual like German. Yeah, tradition. I want to see like Squirtle. Yeah, it would have been like that. <laughs> okay, ninety-nine percent near flawless A plus. I would have just put the Pokemon names in here in the list, but <laughs> this is already pretty damn bright. He had to but that's like, amazing. He had to draw the Pokemon hand and the glove oh, over that over critics. the names. I yeah, mean, that's dude, really difficult. Dude, we're dude, we're critics. We yeah, gotta, that's true. That's we gotta rip apart but, things, even uh, if we love them. Yeah, no, but, he, he showed me that. And I'm just like, oh, dude, see, I got it. We can laugh. We can still <laughs> laugh. It's gonna be okay. <laughs> we can even laugh at the Holocaust right uh, now. <laughs> ew. The, the, yeah, yeah. You know. Oh? The first one, yeah. <laughs> so, oh God. The rehearsal. Uh, <laughs> Sorry. Uh, <laughs> so, okay. I supposed to be a happy spot. Happy spot. This will be our whole hospital. Uh, happy thoughts. Happy th <laughs> I think a lot of us are going to the hot hospital. <laughs> For the next four years. You know what? Maybe it's not uh, so crazy. A hot hospital sounds really yeah, good. Yeah, maybe. Right now. Yeah. Is there booze involved? I'm in. <laughs> so with that said, uh, definitely go check that out. Like it's it's just it's an interesting read. It's a very very interesting. Oh, I thought read. you were talking about Pat Jam. No. Well, yes. yes. The no, guy. I mean the movie. Not the, the movie. movie. <laughs> yes. So um, yeah, guys, that's about it. Uh, and we shall see you next time. We're all mad here. Take care. Later.